to record and I'm going to press go live. And Priscilla's coming on. And I think we are live. So hi there. My name is Deb. I am the founder of Find Calm here. Uh, we take you from chaos to calm with conversations around topics to help you build practices and structures and habits so that you can find a little bit more calm in your day. Uh, today we're going to be talking about memoir writing and we have Carolyn, she's our Find Calm Here community partner for today. I just had a little bit of the feedback from the YouTube. So I think we're good though. Just pause that. So Carolyn, I'm going to go over to you and uh, I'm going to have everybody else kind of mute themselves just so we can get through like a little bit of an information from Carolyn about what's going on in her world. And then we're probably going to do a prompting question for you um, to get a little bit, uh, a little bit of ideas churning. So Carolyn, go for it. If you want to. Okay. Hello everyone. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Um, so I'm Carolyn, of course, and uh, first I'm going to give you a little bit of background about me and um, why I am writing my memoirs, um, what brings me qualifications to be able to share with you how to write. Um, I had been thinking about this as I was putting this workshop together, um, trying to figure out where the impetus was for my interest in memoirs. And it goes back to a couple of decades ago, to the 90s, when I was, I started working on my family's genealogy. And I was putting, like, researching a lot of, like, the dates and names and places. And that was really fun and everything. But I found that I really liked delving into the stories. And so I was seeking out, like, I was interviewing um, people to tell stories about their lives. Like, I, my great grandma, she was still alive. She was like 92 or something when she was telling me a lot of her stories. And I found an old man who went to, went to school with my granddad. So I got his stories about their growing up together. And, um, really didn't do much with my own memoir writing or stories until I started college, which um, I was an adult when I started college, I was in my late thirties. And so of course, you know, I had to do a lot of essays and then um, I took some philosophy classes where I had to write stories. And uh, I, I, so it really took hold actually when I was, um, applying for transfer to uh, Cornell University and I had to make I had to come up with some really good stories to tell to get in <laughs> so I really dug into um, how to write a story how to make it interesting how to um, how to appeal to like how, how to tell like a life lesson that I learned from this event in my life so um, did that and then throughout courses there, I was doing the same thing. And I ended up in a philosophy course my last semester. And as my project um, wrote, I can't remember how many pages it was, this eight to 10 page long uh, mini memoir about my time at Cornell as an adult student. And um, the themes that I was focusing on were regret for um, decisions that I had made earlier in my life and just kind of reconciling that with where I was then at that time because I was happy about where I was but also I was thinking well if I'd done things differently when I was younger or made different decisions then I could have like taken a different path that could have led me here it was just you know your mind wanders in all kinds of places over regrets and decisions that you made so um doing that and through a lot of just exercises that I, I was doing on my own, um, I found a lot of peace. It, it, it was, had been a struggle a lot of my life to make peace with those decisions that I made early on. And I was able to do that partly through my memoir writing. So I took that a step further um, three years ago and created a website and started putting my memoirs and stories and all my vulnerabilities up for 
the world of about 50 people in my circle to read. <laughs> That's a, I think 80 is the highest readership I've gotten on any of my posts. But um, I've been doing that since 2017 and I'm, I've been, you know, getting better at it. You write more, you get better, you write again and you keep getting better. Um, and so here I am and I just want to share with you the, one of the processes that I've kind of come up with to create stories, to um, brainstorm ideas and to connect the stories with um, epiphanies and make meaning out of your stories and your lives. So that's where, that's my background. Um, I'm gonna share my screen now because I've got a little simple PowerPoint here. I will say um, be before you do that though, I would wanna just comment that um, you had a lot of um, information there in your background in history and it sounded really interesting. I was wondering if anybody, before we went on to like the, the next step, if anybody had questions or if there's any um, feedback, then you can always certainly either um, unmute yourself and let us know, or you can put it in the chat um, if you didn't want to come on, you know, to talk about it, or if you just had a quick question, um, <clears throat> Carolyn can, um, you know, I, I'll look at the chat, and as Carolyn's doing the presentation, we'll just um, go over the questions as we go, okay? Okay, yeah. go for it, Carolyn. All right, actually, before I share my screen, I wanted to ask you guys, um, and anybody just chime in and chat or just raise your hand or come off mute. Um, there is a difference between writing your memoir and autobiography. Does anybody know those differences or there's a few differences, but just wondering if anybody has an idea. Okay. Well, good because a lot of people don't and it's important to know the differences. Um, this is where I'll share my screen because I've got a nice bullet point of differences. Uh, all right. Okay, so a memoir focuses on a specific story from your life. Um, in contrast, an autobiography is a detailed accounting of your entire life. So you can, with a memoir, start wherever you feel like starting from. Um, you can tell a story from last week that connects with a story from when you were 12 and you know then make create another story that starts you know when you were like in your in your teens and it can bounce all over the place uh an autobiography is told from birth or somewhere close to birth because we don't really remember a birth um to death actually that's not correct i need to change that because you're not writing when you're gone. So <laughs> birth to present time is an autobiography. Um, in a memoir, if you're like writing a book, then it's a collection of stories. Um, my blog is a collection of memoirs. An autobiography is just one long story of one event and how it led to the next. Um, so are there any questions about the differences? No. Okay, and there's probably a misconception out there that you need to be an experienced writer to write your memoirs, but you don't because, well, who can tell me why would you want to write your memoirs? Anybody? Um, I'll, I'll share just real quickly. I'll share. I think what I had envisioned when I'm thinking about memoirs and what I've done, and I mentioned this a little bit in our call, was um, sharing wisdom that I kind of like a lesson, like I kind of took it as like a little lesson from each um, episode of the story. I, I was kind of considering like them episodes and then I was just sharing like a little kind of lesson. And then I thought maybe yeah, this might exactly. help somebody. Um, yeah. So that's that so. Reason. A lot of times, writing memoirs is for ourselves. Um, we write to make sense of our lives, to make meaning, um, and we can write to share with others. When I write, I find that it's easier to write with the idea that somebody else is going to read it because 
it will make like I'll write better that way. If I'm just writing for myself, then usually it's just you know stream of consciousness kind of journaling writing. But um, so you don't need experience. You just need to be able to put words together and sentences and you know make a coherent story. Um, you need you need a story. You need emotions. Everybody has these things, and you need something to write with. Um, you don't need permission from anybody to write your story. Other people are in our lives and so they come into our stories, but you don't need permission from them to write about how the character that they were in your story or about how they made you feel in any, you know, in any story or any given time. Um, you don't need an intent to publish. You could just write for yourself. You could write because you want to give a story to a, to a relative or a loved one as a gift. Um, example, this is a book that I bought for my dad when a um, long, long time ago. And can you see this okay? Because I can't see my screen. Ah, there we go. Um, it has prompts in it, writing prompts. And I gave this to him for Christmas back in the late 90s. And he filled in some of it, writing some of his story. So he died last year. And my mom gave this back to me when he died. So that's another reason why you might want to write your memoirs. And uh, there's a lot of um, websites out there if you just Google memoir writing prompts, they'll give you all kinds of uh, prompts to think about what to write if you're not sure. Any questions about that? No? Okay, so if nobody has any questions right now, I did intend this to be a workshop so that you can walk out of here with the start to a memoir. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah? All right. So, um, step one and two, I combine those together it, on your own. And all these steps are going to be on my website at Carolyn. I am under tell your story, but I put these two together because it's an exercise. When you do it on your own, it's going to be more organic and you can go from step to step. Um, you don't have to go in, in a linear fashion like this, but, um, you're going to brainstorm some ideas, some stories to write from your life's memories. And what I want you to do is think about the stories, your memories, where fear or regret played into it. And I say, so think of those. I mean, you can, you can write about anything, but for this exercise, I want you to focus on fear or regret because memoirs, they're a reflection their life lessons and the most meaningful have um, inner conflict about situations and events. So um, negative emotions, negative emotions are a big inner conflict for us. And when we, when we can write about those and tell a story about them and, and give a life lesson at the end of the story, then we can make sense of our lives and it brings you self-knowledge and it brings you peace. So take a few minutes and just jot down some memories that you have. Um, I can kind of throw out some prompts or I can shut up so that you can think without me jabbering. <laughs> I'm going to click through and if anybody needs help, maybe thinking of like, if you want some prompts, just kind of raise your hand and I'll Lynn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say um, I'd like a prompt too. I thought that might be helpful. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so. I'd like to have a prompt or two. So I can, well, I was gonna just throw out some kind of ideas, but um, oh, that's what I'll do because this is more focused. So when I'm brainstorming ideas from my own memories, I will kind of do an outline um, or you could do mind mapping, like however you organize your thoughts is, is how you want to do it. Um, so I'll start with, just think of, think of one memory and 
let's see, I, I'm drawing a blank now that I'm trying to think of one. <laughs> so was, was there a time in your life that, um, did you ever get lost when you were a kid? That's a fearful situation. Um, Are there situ are there um, are there decisions from your past that you wish that you had made differently? What were those decisions? Where did they lead to? What what kind of stories can you tell from those? Um, let me see. I'm trying to think. I have some more prompts here that I didn't include. I do have like a couple stories I could share. I was wondering if anybody had a story that's coming to mind as Carolyn is talking that maybe is coming to you about, you know, fear um, or regret or, or other things that might be coming to you because they, like I could certainly share um, one, but I wanted to ask uh, if there's any just coming to mind for anybody at the moment, like stories that you had, life experiences or you learn something. I'm sure there's everybody's got some things where they could, they face some kind of fear. And then there's a really great story around how the, what the outcome was and what you learned, maybe. I don't know. That's where I would go with the example, Carolyn. I don't know if that's helpful. So, yeah, it is helpful. Um, I had some prompts and I just lost them, but I found them again. Um, that's very helpful. If anybody has anything and wants to share, it might. Um, jog somebody else's memory too but i have you, had a fear that goes way back when i mm -hmm. was a teenager in school and um we you know how you rush from one class to another and you you'd go back to get your books out of your locker i was scared to death i'd forget my locker number and my locker combination <laughs> and sometimes i still even dream about it Oh, wow. <laughs> Not very often, but sometimes. Sometimes you still dream about it. So that, yeah, that is a fear that stuck with you. Yeah. And it's just a small fear. That's a really good example because you don't have to come up with something that was like, oh, I was so scared when I jumped out of the plane to go skydiving. Um, it could just be something really simple like that, like just from an everyday occurrence. Um, some other prompts are, what was your first memory? What's the first thing that you remember from when you were like two or three or four? Um, do you have any childhood memories when you felt confused or misunderstood or scared like my mom shared? Um, maybe the first time you experienced somebody's death a grandparent or a pet. I have a feeling Lynn has some fear stories because you're a solo traveler and I know what that's like. I know what the fear can be like. So I think you probably have a lot to pull from with those stories. I don't know that I actually have that. Ma I mean, nothing major comes to mind outside of probably what I talked about. Um, I, I think probably just when I was talking about solo travel last week, just kind of just being a little bit um, just unsure. I mean, I, it was kind of like that nervous, fearful excitement, like going on that first trip and not knowing mm -hmm. what to expect. Um, I, I don't know that I've had anything where I've been like, super feel fearful when I've been traveling. I've been pretty lucky, I think, <laughs> that way. Um, I've probably had some other things when I've been out hiking with the ex-boyfriend who like like to take too many ch chances on things. I'd be like, where are you taking us? There's probably some stories there, hence he's an ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, so um, I, I was trying to think of, of some examples for some of that. Like, yeah. uh, I think there was one time coming down, I'll, I'll go ahead and share it since I was starting to think about it, um, or like rock climbing up in Rocky Mountain National Park. And it's like that type of rock climbing is totally different than 
kind of the easy stuff. So you're like back in like the back country and it's, and we were just coming down. It was me, him and, and, and his buddy. And we were just coming down off the climb and you know, repelling down is kind of can be pretty scary too. But then it like starts, you know, you're up in the mountains in the summer and it starts to, to rain and you, you have to worry about lightning. I mean, you're up at a high, I mean, this is Colorado. You're up at a high elevation you need to get your ass down before, you know, cause you're a target up there. So I remember just like coming down and being like, trying to like get over this boulder field and just being like, Oh my God, I'm either going to get struck by lightning or I'm going to break my ankle. So yeah, you know, I probably have a few stories like that, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. but yeah, but those are, those would be some of the things that I would probably think about is just some of the stuff that I've done um, with the crazy ex-boyfriend. Okay. So that's great. Um, I heard a couple of things in there. Um, it, when, when you're brainstorming on your own for stories, when you think of something like Lynn's story about climbing that mountain and the things that you were afraid of, those things that you were afraid of, could, if, if you give us some thought, could lead to similar situations um, in your life that you were similarly afraid. Um, my mom, Sharon, <laughs> with her childhood story about being afraid um, that she was going to forget the locker combination, and it's, it's it still comes up in her dreams. So, you know, I, I would want to dig into that. Why is it still coming up? What, what other areas in your life do you like remember that kind of fear that it's still coming up? I'm not trying to sound like a psychologist, but that's like just how I kind of brainstorm to myself. Um, and I'll go through, um, like, I'll just kind of pick a story. Okay, so there was, mom, you might be able to help me with this. It, we went to Cedar Point when I was maybe five or six. And this is a regret story. And I don't think you've ever heard this. <laughs> So, um, there's, I, I remember when we, when we were on our way out, we were headed down the concourse to the, um, gate to leave. And there was that game where the guy guesses your weight or your age. And if he guesses wrong, then you get a prize. Um, well, he guessed wrong for me. I don't remember whether I had him guess my weight or my age, but, um, he guessed wrong. And I got to choose a prize. Is any of this sounding familiar? Yeah. Yeah? Really? All right. <laughs> well, all the much better. So um, I remember when I was choosing, you were picking something. You were helping me pick something out. And whatever it was that you thought would be a good choice for me, I didn't really want it. I wanted the, I remember it being, and I might be remembering wrong, but I remember it was like one of those cheap blow up balls and it looked like an eight ball from pool. Do you remember that? Yeah. No. So on the way home, I was probably exhausted and tired and I'm sitting in the back seat and I'm starting to feel bad because I didn't pick the um, toy that you wanted for me. <laughs> so oh. I was like little girl sitting in the back all the way home from Cedar Point and just feeling all this regret because I didn't pick your toy. And I remember um, going to bed and just crying my face off because I didn't pick that toy. So it, and it, it never hurt your feelings at all though, did it? You've forgotten all about it until this time. Yeah. <laughs> What did you pick out? I don't remember. <laughs> it was it was the ball that was um, it looked like an eight ball. Oh, okay. It was just like a little pool ball. Okay. Um. So it's not something. It's just that was just a tiny little regret. It's not a big regret. It didn't change my life in any significant way that I could tell. Um, I don't even remember what the other thing was. I picked what I wanted to pick and. I had fun with it until it was no longer any good and then it went in the trash. Um, but that memory stuck with me all this time. And here's, here's, here's one that you will remember. When you and dad came to Ithaca and we went to the farmer's market, you remember that, right? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we were um, at a vendor that had a bunch of jewelry, a bunch of handmade jewelry. And I was like, oh, I need a new ring. And I had two that I was looking and considering. And you were like, I like the blue and white one. I really liked the other one better. I don't remember what it looked like, but I remember liking that better. And I didn't say anything, but the vendor said, I think that, and she pointed to the one that I liked better. She says, I think this one's you. And I was like, in that moment, remembering Cedar Point. <laughs> so I was like, no, I'm gonna pick the one that my mom wants. <laughs> so that's a way that you can tie two different stories together. Like you have that inconsequential regret story from when you were little okay. and tie it to something more recent. Um, and what's the lesson learned from that? Does anyone have a lesson for me? Okay. I can plug in something that one of my friends likes to say, and, and it's pretty profound. I was trying to make a decision about I don't even know what at one point several years ago and he chimed in um, anybody who's on my Facebook you'll see him his name's Andy he's got big hippie hair um, we argue about politics sometimes like today earlier <laughs> and he told me the decision you make will be the right decision I was like oh well, at first, when he said that, I was like, screw you, Andy, you don't understand how hard a decision this is. But it's true, the decision that you make is going to be the right decision, whether that's the, you know, the Cedar Point toy or the ring at the farmer's market or, um, you know, getting married when you're 22. <laughs> yeah, the decision that you make is the right decision. And if you end up with regret about it later, you can look back and think about why it was the right decision. Maybe it wasn't the right decision for all kinds of reasons, but it wasn't the wrong decision for all those reasons as well. Um, does that help prompt any memories? That was a lot of ranting. I put some uh, information in the chat there, but I wanted to just reiterate it that um, one of the things I liked um, that I've heard before is everything is for me instead of things happen to me. And that really was a powerful yeah. reframe for me a while, a couple years ago, because I had, I remember specifically a conversation that I've had with my mom in the kitchen and we're, I come home from work and I'm really stressed out. I'm just like this, you know, all these always happen to me, all these things, these bad things. I just walk out the door and like bad things just come at me, you know, and I, it took me a long time to like reframe and realize, oh, okay, no, it's like everything can be looked at and you can create a story um, out of every, I mean, maybe not every single instant in life, but I mean, like out of a lot of amazing things that you go through, because no matter what if you're making choices and have the thought of doing something scary then you're challenging yourself and then the next scary thing is a little bit more right the, the next scary thing is a little bit more like you stepped outside today right you were scared like let's say for example you're afraid to go outside and then like you stepped outside and then you walked down to the block and then you saw your neighbors and waved at them i mean and then you said hi, and then there was a story, but like those little steps, then that means you'll go farther the next day and the farther the next day. So it's kind of like that journey into fear is the way to you making amazing changes in your life. I feel that's what I have done with a lot of things that I've, I've done a lot of scary things recently. And I think that's, that's a lot of what I learned is confidence. Yeah confidence and just mindset changes like who would it, 10 years ago would i have been a person that jumped out of a plane and went skydiving no <laughs> 10 years ago would have i been, been somebody who would have left a a full-time full corporate job for like a risky commission only job no <laughs> but like those things i did and it's like it, that kind of stuff is like what 
I think inspires me um, and your stories and, and things that you talk about and challenges that you've had. And that's what really inspires me is other people and listening to them and saying, oh, they did it. So why can't I do it? You know, that kind of a thing. I think that's what really makes me think about wanting to share my life experiences with other people. When you're talking about doing something like memoir yeah. writing. Yeah. Were there any other questions in the chat that I can address? I saw some in there, but let's see. Um, no. I was just making some okay. comments about Lynn's share. Yeah. And then, yeah, I was just making so, if any, if nobody else has any memories you want to share right now, I'd like to go on to the next step. Um, I'd like to get you through um, at least like the first five, four or five steps. And I have all of them um, on my website just outlined, but I'm putting together um, like kind of a explanation of all those steps too because you're not going to be able to just look at an instruction like i have on my powerpoint and just go for it i've got a lot of other instruction in this so um i can take your emails and send it to you when i'm finished and that can help um, and i also have some resources at the end that you might want to check into to help with um just like looking at how other people write memoirs and um yeah so let me get back to sharing my screen or does anybody i'm sorry stephanie did you have something that you wanted to say no i thought your hand went up does anybody else have another memory that you want to share from your brainstorming okay all right so we were on three and if you came up with, if you were able to come up with a lot of different memories, um, or if you just came up with one, just pick one that you want to write about. Like pick that one story that really resonates with you and you wanna, you just wanna tell it. Um, it should be something that you can easily write about that you have a lot of memory around. Um, Writing with vulner vulnerability makes good memoirs. So something that's really vulnerable for you. Um, yeah. So I'll give you a second to do that, to choose one. And then when you're ready, write everything that you can about that story. Just jot down like some key words that can prompt you later to go back in and fill it in. Don't have any, if you're actually writing out sentences, don't worry about structure or grammar or humor or anything like that. The point right now is to just write, like you're just gonna write a first draft of everything that you remember. You're gonna recall the basics of that memory, the dates maybe, um you know the season your age names of anybody else who was involved in your story um place tap into your senses what did you see you want the reader to feel like they're you you want to tell your story you want to show things happening you don't want to tell it you want to show that this is happening so that the reader feels like they're in the moment right there with you so what did you see what did maybe the forest that you were lost in what did it smell like what sounds did you hear taste, anything you felt in the moment. And then as you're writing, if you have any other thoughts, relevant thoughts that are 
they don't even have to be about that story itself. Um, but like Sharon's example, um, she could have, if she's just making notes about that story, just made a note about the dream she had last week that was similar to it. So like similar events, any revelations that you're having as you're writing or that you had when that memory was taking place. If you're writing about regret, you can make notes about similar times in your life that you would have made different choices and possibly had better or worse outcomes. Just kind of brainstorm those things as you're writing. And the possibilities are really as endless, the possibilities of connection are really as endless as, as the threads of all of our lives. So you could go on and on. For my Cedar Point story, I might like make a note about how the cotton candy smelled as I was passing by the cotton candy vendor. Or maybe how proud I felt when I won because I tricked the guy. He couldn't guess how much I weighed. I want to give everybody enough time, but I don't want to take too much time. So if you feel like you're done for now, you don't have to be completely done. This can, I want this to go on after this workshop. You, you, we're not going to get through everything today and you're not going to have a complete story today. So does everybody have a good amount written that they're happy with? Yeah. Okay. So how was that for everyone? Anyone want to tell me what you were thinking as you were writing? No? You know what, Carolyn? I have a question. Sure. Uh, I have a question as to like why um, you focus on something like fear or regret instead of something happy. Just curious. That's a good question. Um, so your memoirs can be about any emotion, anything you want to write about. I encourage you to write about the happy stuff, obviously. It's part of your life and you want to relay those happy moments. It's just um, fear and regret. They're two very common emotions and everybody, I think, has a lot of those stories. So, and, and it's easy, I think it, they're easier to write about too. Um, like a lot of the songs that you hear, they're not, there's, there's a lot more angsty songs than happy songs out there. So I, I feel like as you're digging into your emotions and, and how you think and feel, it's just easier to pull stuff out that is from those darker, vulnerable places. And it makes for a really good story when you learn something from it. Okay. And you can always connect those happy stories to the negative emotion stories. That, that's, uh, there's so many ways to do this. I'm just really touching on one. Sure. Okay. 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 So we'll move on to the next step. Okay. So the next step would be reading about what you've written and just kind of reflecting on it. I often, once I get through that process, I will get up and go do something, some kind of mindless physical activity because it can stimulate a lot of thought about what you've written. Um, like I'll go clean or run or take a shower, put it away for an hour a day, whatever. Um, and then when I come back to it, 
and read what I've written. I'll have a lot, like, I'll sometimes have a lot of new thoughts, but more often than not, I'm making connections between all those little side notes that I made and the story itself. Um, epiphany plays a huge role in storytelling about mem about your life in, in memoirs. So for kind of a shortcut, I, well, let me go back to epiphany. Everybody's had epiphanies, like when you're in the shower, like, oh my God, I didn't think of this before. I understand it now. So those are the kinds of things that you can apply to these stories in your life to make sense of them. And for a shortcut, I came up with some quotes. Uh, let's see, control. Okay, so there's five fear quotes and five regret quotes. Um, whatever theme you're writing about, just see if one of those quotes um, kind of resonates with your story and how you feel about it. For the purpose of the exercise, it doesn't have to be a complete type fit. Just pick something that is close. Hey, Carolyn, I don't see the quotes on the screen. I just no, see oh, PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I think, okay, let me see, new share. Here we go. How's that? Yep, now it's there. All right. Thank you. So these quotes, I mean, you can use a quote for your life lesson. I get a lot of value out of the wise things that people have said in the past um, and make it my own. I also do a lot with song lyrics. Um, and of course, my own epiphanies about the connections between events and things. And then when you go to the next step, what you're going to be doing is giving that story a deeper meaning by writing the connection between your epiphany, the quote, and your story. And basically, you're just going to keep writing. So you're going to keep making those connections, write about your feelings. Why do you feel this way? You're going to keep asking yourself why. And how does this thing connect to that thing? That these things really get the juices flowing about the story. It's what makes it a memoir. It's not just a telling of what happened. That's very important. And when you get through all of this, just throwing everything in this document that you're thinking of about the story, then you come back and make the story. Uh, you, put it in story form and make your, um, you know, your, you go from grabbing the interest of the right, the reader to building up to that conflict and then how you resolve the conflict and ending up with your life, life lesson. And you just keep writing until you exhaust the, exhaust the possibilities. Okay, I'm going to move to the next slide. These quotes are up on my website too, if you wanted to use them later. Okay, I already talked about that. Um, once you're done really uh, going through that brainstorming process and getting all your feelings out on, on your paper, then you're gonna add things like scene description, um, hook and suspense and dialogue. You can use embellishment and poetic license. And this is the time that you're going to start um, putting it into order of a story. So situation, conflict, resolution, life lesson. Edit it for spelling, readability, suspense, and interest. 
Um, a standard method is you start off with the hook, tell the story in the order of events, introduce the conflict, show how the conflict was dealt with, discuss the resolution, and then the life lesson. And those can be mixed up, but that's a very basic way to tell a story. And then the last step is to give your memoir a title. So you would just can, I'm not always really good at coming up with good titles. Some of them are kind of lame, but um, you want to consider the themes that you touched on. Maybe use a short phrase that you had in your story. Um, clever is always good to grab attention so that people will want to read it. I'm not always so clever in my titles. They can use a little bit of help. So again, these are all on my website, um, carolynim.com at tell your story. And I'm going to have a document that explains all of these steps in more depth, more depth than what we went into today even. So you can either um, put your email in the chat if you want that, or you can, there's a link um, for registering on my website to get it. Um, and I'll send that to you as soon as in, it's complete. It's almost complete. And then the last slide I have, well, before I move on to that, does anybody have any questions about what I went through the process and I just want to mention we did talk about putting uh, some follow up things, resources in the Find Calm Here community. So that will be something if you're in the yeah. Find Calm Here community already, that will be where these resources will be uh, accessible as well. So I want to mention that. I have some more resources, or I have resources here. So um, that's my website. And then Laura Weldon, she writes a lot of really good memoirs. She's a published poet. She has taught memoir writing in the Cleveland um, Public Libraries before COVID. Um, and she's received awards for her writing. So she is a really good resource. You just go to her website. That, that's the exact link. But if you go to her website and um, click on the tag memoir, it'll bring up all of her memoirs. And then some other resources I would recommend are, there are a ton of memoir writing resources out there. Like there, there are just so many. So it's easy to just Google and find a lot of good tips. Um, I, would, I would start there. I would also, if you're really serious about really delving into writing your memoirs, if you wanna do something like Deb wants to do, like write a book, I would recommend getting a good book, um, learn some creative writing, take a class on creative writing because a lot of creative fictional writing, um, those, those uh, lessons apply to memoir writing as well. Um, the Norton Field Guide to Writing, it's my Bible. I'm gonna make sure that you can see this, yeah. I've had this for years. It's thick. It's got everything you need to know about writing in it. So I would recommend that. You can find it on Amazon really cheap. Um, prompts. You don't have to actually buy a book like I bought from my dad. You can find prompts on just Google memoir writing prompts and a lot will come up. Um, Read memoirs. I'm reading this one right now. Read memoirs so that you can get used to the style that people use and we'll see different people's styles. Not everybody has the same style. Um, anything to really expand your mind. Any kind of book or 
TED Talks, podcasts, anything that will expand your mind to think different ways, think about um, making the connections. I recommend anything like that. I listen to a lot of TED Talks. I listen to um, a couple of Stoicism podcasts. Uh, the Science of Happiness at, or it's not called The Science of Happiness. It's um, the Happiness Institute at Berkeley. They have, they have Facebook pages, a website, a podcast, and there are always really good prompts. Um, that can lead you to thinking about things in a different way and finding a lot of happiness, which I've found helps me tell a lot of the stories, the happy stories and the not so happy stories. Any questions? I put a lot of those resources in the chat um, and the links, things like that. I will have it in our show notes under the replay. So if you did want to pick up the links, I will have them there. I just missed one book that Carolyn was sharing. So I'll have to catch up with her on the, I think it was the second one. I have the, the field guide and I had the uh, Laura Grace Walden. Okay. Um, you said something after the field guide. This, this was, um, I don't know that it's still out there. It's, there's a lot of books like it. So it's a legacy book and inside there's prompts. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's prompts for writing. And I mean, th this is a book that you would give to somebody as a gift, but it's very helpful for coming up with your own ideas for writing too. Was that the one that you meant? Um, no, but I actually found a link about writing um, legacy writing journal prompts. So that's okay, kind of cool. Great. So I just yeah. put that link in there. Yeah, they're so easy to find out there. So it's really great questions. Yeah. And eventually, so this um, sharing my process and my resources, this is a new venture for me and I'm working on putting all of these resources and the lessons together um, on my website. So eventually all that will, you know, I'll have that all up on my website. So if I have your email, you'll be able to um, get that information quick. If not, just come back and check it out in a few weeks time. I should be done with it. Yay. Cool. So we're just about at eight o'clock or the end of the hour, whatever time it is where you are. <laughs> um, did anybody, before I, I wanted to just say thank you, Carolyn, for sharing this. I know um, we talked a lot about um, journaling and I think it's a powerful tool to find calm in a lot of ways and sharing your story and then actually doing that in a way to inspire others. I think that takes it to the next level and that's what we're really talking about here with, with specifically doing memoir writing. And so I really was, thinking at some point, not right now, but at some point I'd like to put all of these m memoir kind of blog posts that I've written um, into a, you know, bring them all together into a book. So I don't yeah. know if that's an ebook or what, but I basically have so many stories of just little adventures. Like I went on a hike and I fell and I was stubborn and I didn't want to go with your, or like, the whole thing of getting lost in the woods because I don't like to look at maps and like, there's just so many little like mm -hmm. stories that I have about just even going on a hike in my hometown that just helped me kind of get past a mindset where I was thinking like, okay, Deb, just ask, just look at the map, like stop being stubborn because now it's like, nine o'clock at night and you're like, it's going to get dark soon. And you're like trying to trail run to get to the trail, <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of lessons in there. Yeah. You, it's, definitely have, you have a lot to write about just with that. Talking about like we talked about intuition a few weeks ago and it's really about paying attention to your intuition at these really pivotal moments. Because if I had listened to my intuition that said, Hey Deb, grab the map before you go on the trail. And I'm like, I don't need a map. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. those little things. But then I, then I had an adventure along the way. I discovered different trails. I met different people that I wouldn't have met otherwise had I not gotten a little lost and spent so much time. I got to listen to more of the book I was listening to or the podcast or something. I had experiences that I might not have had therein. It also leads to like, you could also say that those other things helped you learn something else about yourself in that exactly. time period. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what I mean about making those connections. And like once you start thinking about one story and how it connects with all these other little things and uh, the, the possibilities are endless about the stories and life lessons that you can write about in your memoirs. I know. Does everybody, I'm wondering, does everybody have a pretty good start, do you think? Yeah? Great. Good. Thumbs up. Well, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or want, want some help with brainstorming. I've got, you know, got some time and I can help out. Be happy to. Um, yeah, I wanted to just say um, thanks to everybody who's here. Uh, if you want to connect with Carolyn, I did put her website in the chat and you can save the chat by pressing the three dots. So all of the resources are there. There will be a replay. It will be posted in the Find Calm Here community, uh, along with the show notes that will have all the resources there. Um, if you're not in the community, I think Colleen's the only one on this call not in the community just yet. Um, but if you uh, are watching the replay and you're not in the Find Calm Here community yet, you can actually go to findcalmhere.com and you press the join button. And that's how you get access into our private community. And basically what happens in there is we continue this conversation. So if you do have a story or you're not sure how to put it together or you wanted to talk to Carolyn or maybe you, you know, you have more conversations you want to talk with and connect with other people. That's what we're doing in the Find Calm Here community. You can bring those resources together and share your story and maybe you'll inspire other people. So thank you all so much for joining the call tonight. I'm so happy to see everybody on. Um, if you do have questions, like I said, you can reach out to Carolyn in the community or in the through her website. And then we are off for two weeks. So our next Find Calm Here event will be on September 2nd because I am going away. And Deb's going on vacation. <laughs> I'm going on <laughs> a fabulous time. And so I'm really excited about it. Um, but we are Stalking having you on Facebook. <laughs> but we are having bef before you go, we are having an event tomorrow night. It's a partnership with Larry uh, uh, Harry, who's the Find Calm Here partner, and he has a workshop about finding fun, finding your future with fun or something. I just blanked out on what it's called. But anyway, it's on the, the front page of the Find Calm Here website, um, so you can grab the Zoom link there. It, it's a 90-minute workshop, but it kind of helps you identify the best way that you play and helps you identify finding your calm through a little bit of play. So I think it'll be really interesting. I'm excited for our partner to kind of share some of his um, workshop abilities with the Find Calm Here community. And uh, so hopefully we'll see you there tomorrow night. That's at 6.45 p.m. Eastern time, which is I think 3.45 Pacific. Um, so anyway, We'll see you tomorrow for that. And then in two weeks, Find Calm Here will be here for the Find Calm with Intuition with the um, Find Calm Here partner, Sarah. So thanks so much. Hope you guys have a nice evening, a nice weekend, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Happy thanks, Carolyn. Bye, everyone. Continue. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Carolyn. <laughs>